Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. I have another video for you today that I think you're gonna love. There's gonna be several different projects that we're gonna do in this video. I'll timestamp them below. I think you guys totally have been loving that. So nevertheless, it'll be in the descriptions. So you can find all the things there as well as supply lists. Um, if you're brand new, uh, welcome, welcome. I hope you decide to, dis to subscribe and turn on that bell. I don't know how you stumbled upon me, but I would love to hear from you in the comments. I, I thoroughly enjoy building a community and engaging with a community of people, especially creatives and people that are new, OGs, um, that'd be like the original people who've been around for a while. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, we're going to cover a series of different projects that I think you're going to like. They're a little summary, I think, but they could totally be every day. I will tell you, I don't know why I'm on this lemon kick, but I'm on a lemon kick and I don't even know where it came from. It just jumped up and bit me. <laughs> Did anybody else get bit by the lemon bug? I've never really been like a change out your decor type of person, like a theme of things, but um, I'm thinking I might want to try that just to see how I like it. Am I really going to redecorate often, maybe every three to six months or so? Maybe, but for the most part, I, I redo my house in cycles. So I don't know if that that's you or not, but that's what I I tend to do. So Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. I'm super duper excited that you are here and I hope today's video inspires you to come back again. Um, share it with somebody. Spread the love. Inspire the world with creativity and DIYs. And uh, don't forget, turn on that bell. Hit the subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. And I cannot wait. So you ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, for project number one, we're gonna make this super cute, affordable, decorative little fence that you can change out the wreath. I've made a couple of these before, but nothing like this one, so I thought I would show you guys how I made it. So I picked up these popsicle sticks, paint sticks, they're just craft sticks from my local Lowe's, or you can get them at Hope Depot as well. And I just took these aviation snips that seem to be easier to cut the thicker wood with, and I just kind of cut random strips and sizes. So the one there that I took out seemed to not fit with the height, so I just cut a new one. You can make this as big or small as you want, but for this one, I'm just gonna kind of make it to where you could layer it behind something or actually hang it on a wall or just set it on a mantle, shelf, entryway, anywhere you like. So make it as big as you like, like I said. You may need to connect multiple pieces of these sticks together to make it larger, but uh, for this one, we're just gonna go with the size that they come in. Now, I did create like a Z brace for this, so what I did is I started by gluing down these, what I call like the straps or the connectors, and then I marked with a pencil the connection in between so that the sticks didn't move. What I decided to do was kind of eyeball it. I just uh, slid the thing across before I actually glued it down to kind of give it a, the perfect position. But again, it was too wide to go from like corner to corner. So I just kind of eyeballed it and glued on the center strap. So what I, where I got these at the Home Depot. So I picked up some craft paint from Michaels. I actually ended up ordering it online because everyone was sold out <laughs> here lately. And you could paint the, this, these sticks ahead of time and then assemble it. But for me, I just found that it was easier to paint it once it was put together. So I did one coat. I dried it really good with my heat gun, which you could get from anywhere. I happened to get mine at Lowe's, but you could pick one up at Harbor Freight if you have one or any local 
hardware store. So I, again, am using the white craft paint from Michaels. It is a craft smart. And for this, I'm kind of finger painting this on because I want it to kind of look a little bit weathered, but I don't want to do like brush strokes. So I don't want to dry brush it. So I'm just using my finger to dab this on all over. And then at the end, I am going to use the eraser on my pencil to kind of smudge and replicate where my finger won't fit in. And I do put my projects on wax paper. It helps kind of um, allow you to turn your project easier, easier over your craft paper. I do use craft paper from Walmart, but for this, um, I also get my wax paper at Dollar Tree. So you could use the craft sticks from the Dollar Tree. You could use the paint from Dollar Tree. Um, this, so I just so happened to, to get from, like I said, Lowe's. Um, this came from Hobby Lobby. My paint came from Michael's but you could substitute anything. Now I did get these napkin rings, I wanna say at Easter, Easter time. And I thought, wow, these would be super cute for summer. So I thought they were kind of sparse. So I ended up dismantling them. I think I got them like 80% off to be honest with you. So I paid nearly nothing for them. And I thought, why not just kind of add in a couple extra petals with some hot glue to the little napkin ring. And once it's all done, just fluff it up a little bit and make sure that you have it looking the way that you want it to. And we're going to actually put this on with a magnet. And I like to do this because you can interchange it with seasons. Like this could be so summery, but then you could put like a fall little mini wreath on there. You could put a Christmas, Valentine's, you could change out your decor for whatever season you like. But for this time, I'm going to start by using this spring napkin ring. Now I am magneting, gluing a magnet, magnetizing the actual fence piece. And then I'm also gluing the magnet to the thing that I want to attach to it so I can interchange it. Now I did have this Buffalo check fabric remnant from Hobby Lobby and I just cut tiny strips and did two of them and just tied a knot. And then I glued those two together and then I wrapped it with an, an even smaller piece to create our little bow. So I, I'm not really good at bow tying. I am really practicing to make them really good. But for this, I just thought, let's do something that's kind of cute. Maybe there was another way that I could have done this. But for me, I just kind of wing it and figure out what works for the look I'm going for. And this is what I wanted to do. So I just, like I said, glued them to each other and then take that thinner strip and just wrap it across the center. Make sure it's dry uh, when you go to glue it onto your board because if not, I noticed that when I started to let go of where I was wrapping, it was wanting to come apart. So make sure it's really tight and glued to each other. Now I did cut dovetail ends on this. I'm guessing that's what it's called dovetail ends like the, I cut the V's in I cut the V's in and you could do um like a corner cut like half of a V totally your preference you can cut them into little strips you could use all, you could use whatever you want to put on here in fact you don't even have to put anything but for me this went so much with my room decor so I thought why not just add this cute little touch here and I am going to glue directly on I do recommend if you wanted to change this out, like I said, seasonally, I would magnet this as well. But this is what we have. It is so stinking cute. And I do think you could use a grapevine wreath. I think I have one of those. I'm going to show you here. Yeah. So you could totally change this out if you wanted to seasonally. Hope you love this one because we're going to get into another project here in just one second. All right, project number two. This one's going to be really cute. 
as you can see, it's going to be adorable. So we're going to use the backside of a Dollar Tree sign. And I'm not going to dismantle the inside because obviously we're just going to use the back. So I'm starting by painting the, the sides of this with Anita's acrylic paint and some black apple barrel paint. It's a blue, but I could not find the shade of blue, like a na deep navy that I wanted. So I just added a touch of black to my paint and it ended up being the perfect shade for this. So one tip I always love to do is mix colors, which I'm sure you guys do as well. Mix your colors to get the shade that you like. And I sometimes will use a paper plate. Sometimes I use my craft paper, but I do um, typically just put my paint right on the wax paper and just kind of go from there. But wrap the whole thing on the outside because we're going to cover the front of the backside. So let it dry really good because you don't don't want this navy color to mix with the white that we're going to put over the brown because we're going to cover this with a napkin and your brown color will show through the thinness of your napkin so i like to paint on my white sometimes i'll let it dry sometimes i just keep it wet and add the mod podge right to the white paint because my mod podge is not white it does dry clear and i wanted to cover this brown so go all the way around your back side of your box and then you're going to be able to separate your napkin. I happen to have this one and this one ended up being two ply. So it was very easy to disassemble and I just cut out one square and it fit perfectly. It was perfect for this project. So never underestimate the use of napkins. You can get them pretty much anywhere. And for this, I, well, I will say that my, one of the, most favorite places I go get my napkins from ends up being like home goods. Sometimes I get the cute ones at Tuesday morning or TJ Maxx. Sometimes I can find them at Ross and occasionally I get the really cute ones at Marshall's as well. But I like to get my napkins affordably, but here lately I've been seeing some really cute napkins at the Dollar Tree. So go ahead and fully coat the back side of your board with the Mod Podge because you're gonna want your napkin to stick pretty well. And then place it and pat it on. Normally I would use a rolling pin to help smooth things out. You can also put down plastic wrap and smooth out your napkin. But for this, I just went ahead and pressed it down and it fit perfectly and then I dried it. So I typically dry on the 120 to 200 setting and I just make sure that it's just dry enough to touch that it doesn't feel wet. I don't really make sure it's super duper duper dry because sometimes I've noticed that when I do that, that my napkin with the Mod Podge can crack the paper. So I just try to let it dry naturally on its own. Sand down your edges with a sanding sponge and it's really easy to do and you'll be able to touch up any of that blue color or whatever color you choose on the edges if you need to. So I'm coating the front of this. Normally I don't do this. I rarely ever seal something, but for this, it was, it, the Mod Podge didn't seep through like it normally did. And so I thought I should probably go ahead and coat this. So I went ahead and did that. And then I'm going to add a bead hanger with some floral wire and you can, I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but you can get yours at pretty much any store. I found that this one was really convenient because it had the cutter built into it. And I just add the beads on and I glue the end beads to the wire and just slide it over and let it dry. And then I scoot all the beads over and then dry the other end and, or glue the other end to it. So I happen to have noticed, I have a bunch of drill bits missing, but I happen to have the, um, it's black and Decker set and my, my Ryobi drill and a uh, drill bit. So I happen to have this idea. I've been loving these type of hangers on here. Now you could glue them to the back or whatever. You don't have to drill holes, but for this, I thought this would be really cute. So I just kind of eyeballed where I wanted the holes to go. I didn't really measure and I just drilled right into the box. And I used a drill bit that allowed the wire to fit right through. And then I did the same thing on the other side. 
And then on the inside of the box, I just kind of folded up the wire, the floral wire, and then glued it into place. Now this is not a heavy box, so I felt like I didn't really need to reinforce it very much, but I did feel like I wanted to make sure it was really adhered so that it didn't come out. And then I just kind of move the wire in and out of the hole so that the glue kind of gets inside. And then all I did was twist and tuck it inside the box because this is of course not going to be seen. It is the backside. And it was that simple. Now you could embellish this if you wanted to, but for me, I'm just going to leave it like so. I hope you enjoyed this one and we're going to get right into the next project. All right, you guys, I said it, I am sucked into the lemon theme. <laughs> so I figured why not make a set of my own? So I was out with my husband this past couple of few weekends ago, and I happened to see a set of dishes inside my local Ace Hardware. And for a set of like six bowls, it was $68. A set of like six plates was $68. And I was thinking, this girl is not gonna pay that much for anything. So I went to the Dollar Tree and got myself some plain dishes. I only ended up getting four plates and two bowls. And it was fine for me because I'm just going to use these for decorative use. They are not to put in the dishwasher, eat off of. This is decorative purposes only. So I am going to make my own set of dishes that I totally, absolutely loved from the Ace Hardware. So I'm using a brand new product. Um, this paint company sent me their line of paint to try. It is Chalk Country, Country Chalk Finishes, Chalk Country Finishes, but it's through BarclaysBunches.com. You can look them up. This is the clear Mod Podge coating that they have released. It's $5 for the large container. You could still use Mod Podge if you wanted to, but um, I showed you you could use either one. And I'm using the set of napkins that I got from Home Goods. It is a three ply, so you'll need to separate all three plies. And it did wrinkle a little bit, but for me, again, it is decorative use. And I used my plastic wrap to kind of smooth it down. And it looks kind of vintagey. It looks like it was printed on the dish that way. It just it ended up being so cute. And that adhesive, that chalk country finishes Mod Podge top coating clear coat it's a it's a glue finish worked so well and it has a matte finish it's not shiny it dried very quickly and then I tried to sand the edges down it just didn't want to come off right so I ended up just pulling it off and then I used my rougher grit sandpaper to kind of really clean up the edges and then I just smoothed it out with the the lighter grit but I did this after it was dry I did not do this while it was wet because you can tear your napkin which we don't want that to happen because those napkins are stinking adorable by the way I love this I never thought I would be into a, like a particular like theme that was very like color coordinated or oriented I've been very much like farmhousey so I did two dishes that were just the solid napkin I did two bowls that had cutouts from the napkin and I used my Sharpie marker to create the polka dots that I loved. I don't have a photo to show you of the dishes that inspired me to make this, but nevertheless, they turned out adorable. And you can make this, I made this for like $6. I have four plates, two bowls, my napkins, and the clear coat, and my Dollar Tree Sharpie marker. And you could actually use the Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree as well and make this so stinking cheap. And it's cute. But again, decorative use only. So I decided I was going to place this just in one area. I wasn't going to do the whole bowl. I wanted it to be more of the polka dots in just like one swatch of the lemons. So one of my bowls, I put a lemon napkin inside and I didn't on the other because I wanted to be able to like layer the decor use of this. So one of them I just put like a plant in and then this one we put a lemon on the inside. So glue down your lemon, be very gentle with it because it can tear and spot it with your plastic wrap and then let it dry and then you're going to be able to start adding on your polka dots, which I think is the perfect touch. It is the cutest. I, it is the cutest. 
But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and glue our lemon on the inside. And I'm still using the same product. And I will probably update you on what I think, like, how does it hold up? Because it is a new product. It is actually a new um, paint line and product line. Very affordable. I'll put the link in the description for you. But if you're loving this channel, please give it a subscribe. Please give it a thumbs up. Turn on the bell. Leave me a comment on what you think of all these crafty creations. There's plenty other videos to check out in the playlist on my channel. But I am so in love with this lemon stuff. So I'm going straight in with my black Sharpie marker from Dollar Tree. You do not have to be particular about your dots. It's going to look kind of weird when you first get started and you're going to think, oh, everything has to be uniform. It doesn't. I love the fact that it is very abstract. So I did, like I said before, I did two bowls with this style and then I did two plates with the solid napkin and then I did two plates that had a staggered lemon and the polka dots as well. So just go around your entire bowl. I didn't do the inside and I did not do the bottom. Just keep going around your bowl until you get to the end. And then once you get done, fill in where you need to. It's pretty easy to do, and I the marker did not wipe off unless you had oily hands. So, decorative use should be good to go. Y'all, I'm so in love. <laughs> I'm so in love. I don't know if you're in love with this. Goodness gracious, please tell me what you think. I would love to hear from you. But I'm just, I've been sanding each item down just a little bit to scuff it before I go placing on the clear coat. And then I forgot to cut this one, so I do apologize for um, you waiting, but I wanted to show you how I did it as well. So I just cut out not directly to the edge. I just cut around it. You could still see some of the white, but it blended in really well with the plate. And then this is what I did. I staggered two different lemons in two different styles. So it kind of matches now the pattern of the other dishes. And then glue these on. Again, I'm still using that same glue. It is the Chalk Country Finishes. You could also use the Mod Podge. Be gentle with this because if you do happen to use, um, and I think you maybe even could get these lemon napkins on Amazon. I'd have to check and see if I can find them for you. I've had questions like crazy um, because I did share part of this project over on my Facebook page. We made a we made one of our bowls together over there because I love to do live videos with my friends over on my Facebook page. And uh, everybody was absolutely in love with this project. And they were like, I can't find the napkins. I'm pretty sure, you know, if you can't get them at a place like I did, you might be able to find them on Amazon, like I said. But keep an eye out. Be looking. Look for things out of season and add them to your craft stash for future projects. But again, I'm just going in with my Sharpie marker that I got from Dollar Tree. I was very surprised that they carried Sharpie markers there. So you can get you a dollar marker, get you dollar dishes, get you a set of napkins for like four bucks, but you're going to be able to use them for multiple projects. And I kept um, getting a little bit of the glue in my marker, so I had to keep dabbing it off on the plate. I didn't, I was a little over gluey with my my mixture across the plate but it only happened right up close to where the lemon was added on the plate but it's so cute it's so cute i like i'm almost wishing i could eat off of these i know there's something you can coat them with if you know of something i don't really know for sure let me know in the comments what you what you would use to coat these to make them dishwasher safe or to be like food grade safe but I don't really like the shiny stuff. I'm, I'm a matte girl, so I don't like the gloss. I'm not a sparkle, shiny kind of girl. <laughs> um, I like glitter a little bit, but this is how we created this look. And I am telling you, it's adorable. You can even do like a, a printable. You can get a scrap, like a, a printable online and cut them out and glue them on instead of using napkins. That would probably work too. But look at this set, y'all. Look at how cute this is. 
It's adorable. I can't even take it. I have a barn ride hutch in my home and that's where these are going to go in. I wish I would have photographed them in the hutch for you to see, but instead I just kind of photographed them together. But how fancy and cute are those? And they did not cost me $68 for six plates and $68 for six bowls. Oh my goodness. I'm loving it. I'm so excited. So we're going to get on to the next project here in just a second, but just admire how cute these dishes are. So adorable. So adorable. All right, y'all give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, turn on that bell, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And, um, I'll see you in the next project. All right, this is our last project on this video. I have thoroughly enjoyed this summer DIYs from the Dollar Tree. I love making decor, by the way, but this one I thought turned out super cute. So I'd seen this somewhere on Pinterest. I don't remember where it was, but I saw they did a watermelon. So I thought, why not do a lemon? And I just used this patriotic sign from the Dollar Tree and some of my craft paint. And I'm going in with just a regular tip brush to paint it. And this is, I can't remember exactly what yellow color this is, but I want to say it's like daffodil, but it was a very bright yellow. And then I'm also going to be mixing this yellow with a lighter colored yellow. I think that it's Waverly, pretty sure. And I want to say it's maize is the color of yellow that I ended up mixing with this bright yellow. So I'm just going around the whole board with a craft tip brush coating the entire thing with one coat. Be sure it's dry completely before you put on your next coat of paint. All right, so I like to pick up these bowls from the Dollar Tree to mix paint in. So again, I do believe that is the color Maze from Waverly and I'm using some folk art chalk. I don't know if it's a multi-surface or not. And then we do use I think we use a little bit of the dark yellow. I'm not for sure. I think I did, but I'm not quite certain. Nevertheless, I did mix this up and uh, we're going to use this to add the lighter shade of the petals inside. So we're gonna do inside petals, pulp. It's the slice of the lemon. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Anyways, so we're just mixing this in to make a super light color kind of eyeball it to whatever shade you want it to be and then we're going to go right in and put in the next coat and we're going to leave a little bit of the edge exposed to create the what is it the zest the edge the the, the skin of the lemon you know what I'm saying So now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I did not mix the darker yellow with the lighter color. So uh, if you happen to do this, I just want to note that even if it's not shown, I, I'm i looking and I'm trying to remember when I made this, if we did in fact, I don't think that we did. So uh, just go in with, the, with whatever shade of yellows you like and just kind of make it a little bit more pastel. It would be like a pastelish yellow. Yeah. So when I do my projects, I talk to myself, you guys, and I don't know if you do too, but I, I'm like this, you know, I just talk to myself. So if you ever see me motioning and moving, I, I'm not a silent crafter. <laughs> I'm not a silent DIYer. I just, um, I talk myself through things. So I'm using the darker yellow now to create the shape of the inside of the lemon slice. And I'm just winging it not really doing anything other than just kind of going with the flow but because we are going to fill this in if you make any mistakes initially painting your lines on you can thicken them up or thin them out 
to create your shapes and you'll see like I over I had to go back and fix a couple different things but in the end once you start adding in the different colors to the center it it kind of fixes itself so it just kind of no perfect lines just very like I think about every time I would cut open a lemon or something it's never going to be like the exact same thing there's going to be like either more seeds or not more seeds there's going to be different colors and shapes and stuff inside so just kind of go with whatever you like and I wanted this to be kind of chunky and like ombre ish feel so I went in and just kind of did random thick lines for this project. And I'm just using some art brushes from, I think Amazon is where I pick those up. And I don't wash out my brushes. If I'm gonna be painting like this, I get them so in bulk so I can throw them away. But if you are on a budget and you wanna save all your brushes for your projects, you can absolutely just keep a cup of water beside you and put your brushes in there. Otherwise, I'm not trying to mess up the tips of my brushes to reuse them. They always end up getting fanned out. They never, like, does anyone save their brushes and reuse them? I mean, tell me, am I the only one who just pitches them in the garbage? <laughs> or do you guys reuse yours? So I'm just taking that folk art paint and I'm using the cap and I'm creating the ombre blend here with the yellow and the white so we're going to be using the yellow that we had used before on the surface and we're just going to be blending it in so what you do when you ombre is you create um, touch points of the paint and then you cross blend so i touch points and then you cross blend the two and then that kind of creates this faded area of like an ombre look Normally I would cut this out because it's so redundant and repetitive, but I wanted you guys to see how each one um, is just a little bit different when you go and do ombres and blending. You may have to add paint back and forth to get the perfect look that you're going for, but it may not be exactly precise. As long as you get the finish that you're looking for, I think you're going to be good to go. So just wanted to share that with you guys. All right, here's how cute it looks. It just looks so summery and fun. I love it. So we're going to be painting some beads to add a bead hanger. And we're doing a yellow, white, and black. Because we are going to be adding a messy bow to this. Yes, I'm, I'm a sucker for the lemons. I'm all about those messy bows right now. This is so not me, but it's so me now. <laughs> Does anyone ever feel like you never thought you would be um, a lover of something? And then when you do it, you realize you actually like it. And you sort of embrace it that's me this is where i added that deeper yellow so i knew i remembered adding a little bit of that deeper shade of yellow so we added it to the the color of the beads and this is black and then of course white and i do sprayed water into the bowls to dilute the paint to kind of stain the wood i get my wood beads on amazon and i do buy them in bulk and then i just take a paper towel and dump the beads out onto it and kind of swirl them around and then dry them in the paper towel and then put them into a bowl you could do it on a skewer. There's a many other ways you could do this, but this is how I typically do it. I just, I mean, then you got to thread it. I mean, it's, it's all a matter of preference really, but for this, that's how I do it. 
just put the paint in a bowl, paint your beads, dry them in a paper towel, dump them out. All right, we have all of the beads completely colored. So I just, they're all dry and I'm using a darning needle or a quilter's needle to thread my twine. And that makes it easier for me to thread my beads. Now you're gonna thread them. I did yellow, black, white, I think. Was it yellow, black, white? No, yellow, white, black, yeah. And if you get a little bit of paint on your beads, it's okay. You want them to kind of look distressed anyways, right? I enjoy making all these super cute fun things. So just make sure you thread all of these. And when you get down to the end, just make sure that they're completely dry. And then I do the same thing I do before with even with the floral wire is I glue my beads to my twine. You don't have to do this. It's not necessary. You could tie a knot. You could glue them. Sometimes I do both. But we are going to be adding a messy bow. So I'm not going to place my hanger on just yet. Now I did get this lemon fabric at the Dollar Tree. In fact, I got, I think I only have two rolls. I think I gave my mom like two rolls or something. I don't remember. And I think I gave some away on my Facebook page. I like to do Friday night crafting and gifting. So I do random like gifts to just say thank you for being a part of my community. And so that's what I, I think I did with the rest of that fabric. But I'm just notching it and then just ripping it to make a messy bow. So I did several different things to make this bow. I used fabric and ribbon and burlap to make this. And I just use random swatches of fabric that I have on hand. Now I've learned that you want to pile all of your materials into a mess. <laughs> you just pile it into a mess. And then you just randomly pick. There's no like pattern, there's no order, there's no nothing. So I did the lemon fabric, I did the white fabric, I did yellow and white stripes. This was wired like daisy ribbon and I cut it up the center and used it. And then some of these I got at Hobby Lobby. I think some of them came from Michael's. Yeah, like I think that one came from Michael's. I'm doing the polka dots. And then I think I did... I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure, I don't think I added any twine to this. It's hard to do voiceovers, y'all. I'm, I'm watching literally as I'm voicing this over, trying to remember exactly what I did because I do so many projects. I just forget sometimes and I don't want to leave anything out for y'all. So if I miss something, I do apologize. But, um, or if I over state something and maybe I thought I used something I didn't use, you guys get the idea. Uh, you get crafty, you do your own thing. That's what I love to inspire people to do. You don't have to do exactly what I do. You do you, girl. You do you, guy. Uh, but I love to inspire you. So take all your little things, mix them all up into a bunch, no particular order, slide them aside, and start with the burlap first. Why? I do not know, but it works really well. And then just start randomly layering. Just make sure that you're using all of the segments and you're not doing too much of the burlap in between so you want to do it in equal parts but not in a pattern i don't know if that makes sense but y'all get the idea so keep going keep going no particular way i keep picking up that burlap and then i'm like no it's not time for the burlap there we go but once you're done you're going to use a zip tie to attach all of this and you're going to kind of shake it out a little bit um, my good friend, Melanie, I've mentioned her before. Um, she is, she's taught me how to make these bows and I love her creativity and the way that she does her D her, her DIY bows are just absolutely amazing. Yes. You will get frustrated when all your stuff starts sticking to each other and you're like <laughs> looking for it and you're like, where'd it go? Y'all, I'm a disaster. I'm a hot mess. I know it, but I love to do this and I love to just, I love to share it with you guys and I hope you enjoy this. If my channel's for you, you love my videos and my hot mess, tune in, subscribe, turn on the bell, come back again, go check out the other videos, shake out your bow really good. <laughs> We're going to make it adorable. 
So zip tie it. You could use twine. You could use uh, pipe cleaner. Uh, for these thicker stacks of fabric, I found that the zip tie does probably work the best for me. Just because it just keeps it really tight and formed. Put your um, attachment on the back side. And then before you attach it really, 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 really tight with the zip tie, go ahead and form the little like, um, group it together like a, like a cluster and then cl cut off all your ends to where they're somewhat even. You may have to trim it up later. I know I did. And then uh, like squish it around and shape it and make it messy. Don't try to overanalyze it because when you do that, you're going to try to create patterns in uniform and then it's no longer messy. So I cut off my zip tie and I'm gluing this to my lemon slice. Isn't that adorable? I'm loving this for summer. And I did do the black and white. I thought it was really cute. I thought I used the B fat, the B ribbon that I had, but I didn't. Um, I actually used that when I was decorating my dishes, but for this, I'm, I don't think I, I definitely didn't use it for this, but I got this really cute B fabric at Hobby Lobby and I, I'm absolutely loving it. So I, one, I want to tell you, and I did not share this with you because it was really hard to explain and film this is the bow hangs to one side and it weighs down this very thin sign or door hanger or whatever you want to call it. So what I did is I made sure when I was going to hang this to attach the twine to the back of the sign. And then in the bottom corner, what I did is I took a piece of cardboard and I added it to the bottom corner on the opposite side of the bow. And it balance, it counterbalanced the weight of this. And you'll see if you go to make this project what I mean. When you go to hang it, it wants to tip to the heavy side. And so just counterbalance it and you'll be good to go. But this is our super cute project. I love this. I found this idea on Pinterest and I think it turned out super stinking cute. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next one.